in this part because I'm like pretending that a bunch of people can see me even though like everyone's starting to come in and feels kind of weird hello 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 I'm just playing some guitar we're still a little early you know what's stuck in my head uh, right now is uh, Welcome to Paradise does anyone know that song? Can anyone name that band? I'm sure you guys can. Or maybe it's just my generation that it's like, that was that was like our version of the Ramones. Mario has a question. Absolutely. I told everybody to bring your questions. And um, we even have an option where we can invite people in. Uh, and so if you guys are okay with that, I'd love that. Check, check, check. Can everyone hear me okay? Hello, 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 hello. Just play a little. It's probably just that uh, I'm playing piano at the same time as I'm talking. Anyway, hey everybody. Good to see you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here today. We are talking about what is probably the most commonly asked question that I hear as a vocal coach, and that is, how do I expand my darn range? How, how does one do that? Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been talking all morning so far, so I apologize for the, uh, the occasional coughs and stuff like that. So what I want to do is I want to just get started off and I'm going to open this up to the folks that are in the chat. How do you guys define expanding vocal range? What does that actually mean to you? Go ahead and put that in the chat. I'm very interested. Um, what does it mean to you to expand your range? And by the way, I have like slides and stuff too, if we find that helpful. Um, but I just, I want to make this a little bit of a conversation to get started, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Now, let me ask, let me tell you guys why I'm asking this question. The reason that I'm asking this question, excuse me, is because a lot of times I see students that are, they're obsessed with their vocal range and they're like, okay, it doesn't matter how I hit the note doesn't matter how that note sounds, all that matters is just that number, is just getting that number or that letter or that, you know, that combo, like an E6, for instance, that's what I mean by a letter and a number, getting that, that number higher. Now, the reason that I say that, and I like Diane's um, definition, to be able to sing at ease in a higher and lower register. Now, I'll just expand on that definition slightly and just say, to be able to sing effortlessly and easily across your range and sound good doing it. Why do I make that distinction? The reason that I'm making that distinction is because, I, as I mentioned, I see a lot of students that are like, they're, they carry a, they're, they're worried about subharmonics, they're worried about whistle notes, but their E4, the note where they transition from the bottom to the top part of their voice, is pretty iffy. And the reason that I am such a, a zealot about this is because nobody cares how high you can sing if it sounds bad. Now, there's certainly something to, to say about, uh, let's see, Angie says, for me, expanding vocal range means hitting, reaching high notes that I hit when I was younger, but now that range is harder to hit. Yep, age, age does that to us. But Angie, uh, you know, it really just depends on uh, the condition. Of the voice. Now, as we get older, and I'm talking older, older, I'm talking, you know, 60s, late 50s, 60s, sometimes 70s, um, and older, is when we start to really see those shifts change in the voice. Prior to that, you know, let me ask you guys this. When do you guys think most men uh, mature into their 
voice. When do you think most men's voices settle finally? Can anyone answer that? When do you think most men's voices settle? I'm just gonna pull up my guitar and keep playing while I listen to everyone's. People are saying in their 30s, when they're 18. You know, some, you know, puberty and everything aside, that can start, you know, in lots of different times um, for a man's voice. It can start earlier or later. But actually, Lady Bird has it right that most men's voices don't really settle until they're in their mid 30s, sometimes even their 40s. Um, and so this idea of like the voice changing as we age is very, very different, you know, as, as throughout our life cycle. So, you know, when Angie was talking about like, you know, for me, it just means being able to hit the notes that I used to be able to. Um, instead, we're talking about singing well for where you're at. And it's so, so important to me that we're basically making sure that the vocal range sounds good from bottom to top and all the places in between for where you're at right now. Now, as uh, I've mentioned in the, uh, in the title of this, there are three steps to expanding the vocal range in that way, in what I consider to be the right way. Because anyone can like just squeak out a note, you know? And that's like, oh, that's crazy, that's an E6. Does anyone want to listen to that note? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And, uh, okay, great, I got down to a G0. Who cares? It's not usable. It doesn't sound good. What we're talking about is your usable range. And there are three steps to that. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But I always like to get started off with these with kind of like a quick story. Now, when I first got into the whole vocal training, me taking lessons, when I first got into the whole vocal training thing, I thought that there was only two ways to hit high notes. That was either just letting go and singing it super light and soft, or to just shout it, and not get there. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you guys probably know that I believe that there is kind of a mix between those two, what we call the mixed voice, so that it's not Oh, but ah, where it sounds full and strong, but at the same time, it is relaxed and it has a quality and a power to it that we really, really want. So anyway, so I was first starting off and I had this song. Oh my God. Am I really going to play this? I'm, I'm really going to play this for a second. So... Yeah, that's the chords. I haven't played this song in like 12 years. Anyway, the song was, I think it was called uh, Don't Call Me or something like that. This is a long time ago. But I had this, this section that was really, really high. I went up to, I think it was a... Up to a B4. Up to a B4. So I would sing it like this. That's how I recorded it. But because I was playing in the train stations at the time and I needed to project my voice because no one's gonna hear that. Don't call me. Instead, I sang Don't call me if you want me. I was just pushing for the note. Right? Does that make sense to everyone? Does everyone see the distinction there? Is that I can sing that note on tune. And in pitch, in falsetto, so that... Don't call me if you want me. I won't be there. And it was just that light. But at the same time, if I went out to perform that, then I would sing... Don't call me! I would just 
just push my voice in order to get there. That distinction makes sense to everyone? Awesome. Mario is asking, how, I, how do I develop vibrato? Mario, I just released a video on that like a week ago, uh, but I will answer your question in a little bit. I just want to stay with this story. So I only had, in my mind, two voices. There was the, really breathy, or the, and there was nothing in between. And so what was so cool about doing lessons was that all of a sudden I went, was my teacher showed me that there's a way that you can combine those two voices together to create a sound that's somewhere in the middle. So, don't call me. So it's actually connected. And that is way, way, way more controlled than, than the other two options that I had. So there's always another, there's always another and a better way of doing something. So that is my definition of expanding vocal range is sounding clear, sounding good, and feeling comfortable even at the highest ranges of your voice. Awesome. I'm so, so glad that that makes sense. All right, Mauro, you can sing high notes really easily without straining. Fantastic. Um, we'll talk about your vibrato question in a second. Now, I'm going to, let's see if I can share my screen. I have not done this before, but I thought some, um, I thought some slides might be helpful. And so this is a presentation that I did with the brand Shure and Focusrite a while ago. Let me just see if I can find the right slide. So here we go. The first step in improving your voice Improving your vocal range is to find your head voice, right? So the first one that I demonstrated a minute ago was in the head voice. So that, don't call me, that is head voice. What is head voice? How do you guys define head voice? How do you guys define that? Tell me what you think. What is the definition of head voice to you guys? Diane said it's much different when singing into a mic than singing around a campfire. Always sounds better with the mic. Now, why would that be? That's because when you start to use more muscle, when you start to use more voice, and when you start to use more of the instrument as it's meant, then there's a lot more things. There's a lot more things that you have to take into account, right? Um, so it's always easier to sing something really, really breathy and light than it is to sing something with, you know, uh, with power and control. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Let me see if I can enlarge that. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, uh, what is the definition of head voice? Um, Sincosi said the highest note you can reach in your range or max extensive voice. I like to just think of head voice as the top part of the singing voice. And um, there is a real kind of sound to that. Um, when we're talking about the vocal range, what we're really talking about is stretching the vocal cords a bit. So the vocal cords, and I'll show you uh, an example of this in just a second. It's kind of like this rubber band thing, right? It's like if you stretch, the rubber band, if you stretch the vocal cords, you're naturally able to hit higher notes. So if I just go from ah, making that change from the low note up to the high note, I'm just stretching out the vocal cords. Now, obviously it's not going this far because we're talking about vocal cords that are like that big, but you get the idea. It's just like I'm kind of stretching things, right? So when people are saying it's the very top register, it's the top part of your voice, exactly. And how do you actually get there? By stretching out the vocal cords. And I think I've got, let's see. This is what the vocal cords look like in that top part of your voice. I know it says falsetto. We'll talk about the distinction between falsetto and head voice in just a second. But basically, if you like cut me right down the middle here and you looked at my vocal cords as they were vibrating in my throat, 
this is what falsetto would look like. It's just the very tips are touching. Rather than the full vocal cord, it's just the tips up there. Does that make sense to everyone? Just want to make sure. Zachariah said, is there an upper limit to how much you can stretch? Absolutely there is. But most people don't get there. Most people don't stretch their voice quite as much as, as they, they actually can. Um, and the reason that I say that is just because so many people um, think that if they, once you do some vocal training and once your voice is, uh, is accustomed to singing up higher, it starts to unlock even a little bit more stretch. So there is a, a theoretical limit. Um, and I'll be working with students for, for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden they're able to hit like one higher note. So it's, is it, you know, is there an upper range? Yes, absolutely. Um, but theoretically you can always stretch like another like half step or another step or something like that. So step one is to find your head voice. How do we actually start singing in your head voice? Right? Because I was just talking about head voice like it was a really bad thing a second ago, right? It's like, oh man, that's not something that you want. You don't want to just sing it. Don't call me. But I'm at the same time saying that that is the first step. So if you're only going from that place where toxicity is talking about, where it's like how to stop tightening your throat and getting hurt, don't call me. I'm just really stretching. I'm really pushing. So instead of doing that, Sing it in falsetto first. So that, don't call me. Really, really light. Really, really light. Now, there's some great examples, some great exercises that you can actually do to help you with that. Um, one of the best ways that you can do that is to work with exercises that are going to help stretch that. So back to this for a second. One of the best ways to do that is to use singing vowels as tools to help you hit more head voice notes. Hopefully everyone can see that. Cool. Just want to make sure. So what's an example of a closed vowel? <laughs> Maybe you guys already saw it. Can anyone give me an example of a closed vowel or a narrow vowel? Mario said, can you work with me audition for the voice? Yeah, absolutely. Just go to my uh, uh, booking page. Uh, Carolyn, would you mind just uh, putting that in? You can sign in under my under my account in YouTube, so it comes out as Ramsey Voice Studio, or you can use your own, whichever one. Uh, but my uh, virtual assistant Carolyn will uh, put a link to to book a lesson. That way, you can do that. The first one's fifty percent off. So, what's an example of a close vowel? Can anyone tell me an example of a close vowel? <clears throat> Thank you very much, Angie, for putting uh, for donating to the channel. I really appreciate it. Can anyone give me, if, if no one gives me an example of a close vowel, I'm going to have to assume that you don't know. But that's totally fine, too, because we're all here to learn. So a close vowel is just what it sounds like. It's a vowel that happens when your mouth is more closed. So what's an example of a, ah, oh, I see it. Great, great, great. The Mamgusian, that's a cool name. Mamgusian says E. Zenkosi says, ooh, toxicity says, oh, these are all very, very good. Um, so I actually have a little chart here that I'll get to in a second. So close vowels are the best vowels to sing higher. So for example, ooh and e, where my mouth is the most closed. Um, that's the best way to get, to get up there. What is it about those? Well, we can talk about acoustics all day. Um, but before we actually do that, can you name a song that has a high note in it that start that that has that note on an ooh or an e? Can anyone give me an example of a song with a high note on an ooh or an e vowel? I want to see I want to see what you guys are thinking here. A high note on an ooh or an e vowel. And I know the chat's a little delayed, by the way, because I'm doing this through a third-party software. So if I don't see your, uh, if I don't see it, that's, ah, someone you loved. 
Okay, Mario, what's the word? What's the word that has an ooh or an e on it? I've got several examples, by the way. I just want to see, I want to see what you guys are thinking. Ah, okay, so loving you, the one where she squeal, squeaks e, but she goes, ah, she seems an on ah, so you're close. Yeah, Mario, I know, I know the song that you're talking about, someone you loved, but what's the vowel on ooh or e that you're talking about? Love on top? You don't have to give me the word that it starts on. But for an example, um, we can think of, uh, I don't know if you guys like Fleet Foxes, but there's a song, uh, Oliver James, where he's like, ooh, on the way to your brother's house in the valley deep. So that's really, really light, and that's kind of falsetto-y, but that's what he's going for there. Um, another one could be uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dreams. It's only right that you should play it the way you feel it. Oh, I like that. Um, it's all the same. Right? Yeah, it's only right. That's the word. It's right on that top note that she flips on. I haven't seen an example yet where it's on, uh, on an E or an O, but that's all right. They're everywhere you look. Um... There's lots and lots of examples of those. Um, but all you need to know is that this happens all the time in music, as singers and artists make these choices to put more narrow vowels in the top part of their voice. And I think that that's just because that there's a part of, of human nature that we understand, that has, uh, that we understand um, intellectually, that singing those higher notes is easier on those. Otherwise, we're just gonna, ah! right? Great examples, great examples, guys. Um, let me see here, let me get back to this. I'm gonna pass by these examples. Oh yeah, Baby Love is another one. Ooh, my baby love. Right? Uh, yeah, Mojo Pin. He starts that, ooh, at the very beginning. Oh, Scar Tissue is great. Lonely you. Right? And I can't play these or else I'll get in trouble with YouTube. So let's just try a silly exercise for a second. If you can, actually let's invite someone in for this. Who's feeling brave that wants to try something? Uh, Mario says Shallow by Lady Gaga. So what's the, what's the word that it happens on? Okay, so let me see if I can invite. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to throw this out there and I'm going to invite somebody to do just a really quick demonstration of this. If you're interested, here is the link. And Carolyn, by the way, um, feel free to um, start dropping in that link because I do have a fantastic course to help you expand your vocal range. So feel free to drop that in a couple of times as people are talking. So um, I'll just uh, drop that link in there and anybody that wants to do this example with me can. And in the meantime, I'll just keep talking about it. So ooh and e, really, really good to help you get there. So one example that we can use <coughs> would be like on a foo. So let's just try this. Uh, Zenkosi, yeah, so the rules are you have to show your face and you have to have your mic on or else we're, we're not going to be able to uh, connect with you. We need to connect with you. So if there's anyone that wants to, yeah, absolutely. And, and people are asking, like, do you have to be a professional in order to volunteer for this? No, um, you can totally do that. Uh, and Carolyn, you can go ahead and just drop the link to that, uh, to the course that you're talking about so that people can get enrolled in that. Um, and it's a great way to support the channel. I have an Expand Your Range Fast course. It's only 19 bucks. So no one's been brave enough to uh, volunteer to be uh, in, this, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the hot seat here. So I'll just demonstrate it. So how do you go about finding that head voice? Well, the first example in this case, we can use a foo. Like you're going foo. Like food. 
Hey, Mario is here. All right, Mario, I'm going to add you to the stream. Make sure that you're uh, standing and you're in one place where you can just set the phone down and just be uh, totally comfortable so that we can do a little singing stuff. All right, you're looking good. Looking good. Right on. All right, you're coming on, buddy. You ready? All right. <laughs> oh, so nervous. Oh, gosh. Hey, how's it going? Going good. I've actually watched a lot of your videos. Um, <clears throat> before we do the exercise, I just want to say, like, someone has said on one of my YouTube videos that they thought I was, like, seeing, like, like, um, because every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping me awake. Yeah. Does that sound like I'm seeing off key, like out of tune? So um, that's a great question. First of all, thank you for being so brave and, and volunteering for this. We're all trying to learn from each other. So um, let me just, uh, yeah. So, a million dreams is all it's gonna take, right? That's the key that you were singing in? Because I used, well, I used like, I used a little bit of my high voice. I was trying to make it sound like a powerful, I was trying to sing like the person was singing like a powerful version of the song. Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, that's perfect. So, Mario, I am hearing that there are some notes in that that are a little flat, are a little out of key. But it's not, but I can tell that it's not because you don't know where the notes are. You know where the notes are. It's just that that's in a little bit of a strainy place in your voice right now, right? So um, just to tie this in with um, what I'm teaching here in this exercise, why don't we try this? Why don't we just go on foo? Can you go foo, 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 foo? Yeah, I can go there. Don't worry about it. Let your voice flip. Let it do that. Now do that again. Good. You're good. Now try that same thing. And this is skipping ahead a little bit. Oh, Carolyn, for some reason. Oh, there it is. I'm able to see it now. Excellent. Um, Carolyn just dropped the link to the expand your range fast vocal course right, right. there. Um, now what I want you to do is. Take that same feeling of foo, and I want you to just put it on a nay, like you're saying the word nay. So, nay, 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 So sorry, Mario. The only way this works is if I demonstrate it first, and then you sing it back. Otherwise, our voices will go at the same time. So go for it now. Nay, 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 nay. Yeah, but run. Nay. Try to hold that note in. Nay, 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 nay. <laughs> it's so hard because it's so hard because my voice wants to use the vibrato in that in my high voice. My voice wants to use it so bad. I have totally. trouble controlling it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the problem with the vibrato in this case is that the vibrato is going to shake off that note and it's going to make you break. So you're like, nah. it's going to make you flip there. So instead of doing that, I want you to hold into it. Can you try this? Can you go? Yeah. Nay, 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 nay. Nay, 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 nay. Nay, 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 nay. Nay, nay, nay. Uh-huh. Yep, the whole thing, though. Nay, 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 nay. Were you able to hear me, Mario? No, I not really. It was like in and out for there for a second. Sure. Can you do that same thing, but on? Nay, 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 nay. Nay, 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 nay. Down here. Nay, 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 nay. But try to keep it really strong and really ugly. So, nay, 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 nay. So you just repeat it and then you come back down like this. Nay, 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 nay,
na, 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 na. There you go. Good job. Come here. Na, 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 na. Listen to my note again. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. There you go. One more. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. That's it, dude. That's the same note. That's a every night I'm lying in bed. That's the note. Right there. Every night I'm lying in bed. Nice, nice, nice. Now try that same thing on na. Na, 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 na. Okay. Na, 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 na. Dude, perfect. Everybody give it up for Mario. That was great. Now, try the same thing. Be brave right. here. Be brave here because it might go terribly wrong, and that's all right if it does. But try to keep that same kind of ugly, right. sort of nasal feeling of that nay, but on the lyrics. Because every night I'm lying in bed. Because every night I'm lying in bed. Heck yeah, dude. Way to go. Nice. Now, that to me is not perfect. But it's better mm -hmm. than is every night I'm where it was kind of straining up into there. It's not perfect, but it's definitely getting better. And I can see yeah, how so like when you said like bad, I heard like an N. I didn't hear like the D on the end. I heard like the Ben. I heard like Ben. I didn't hear bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So rather than uh what Mario is talking about is like rather than hitting the consonant like super hard in bed instead it's just a very gradual every night i lie in bed like i'm not hitting that d too hard right right you're not i want to go every night i lie in bed Duh. that wouldn't sound very good right <laughs> no that right, sounds pretty funny up for mario congrats dude that sounded great thank you so much for being here everybody give it up for mario thank you thank you mario um beautiful okay great so we skipped a couple steps there but i want to just give everybody kind of the broad overview so the first step is that we found mario's head voice right we had him do that foo -foo, foo -foo, foo -foo, foo -foo, right then at the same time we had him go into the nay right afterwards to get him to connect into those top notes a little bit more nay 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 then once he found that feeling then I had him go on back onto the lyrics. Does that make sense to everybody? Just want to make sure that that totally makes sense to everybody that's on here. Awesome. Okay, great. Yeah, people are saying it's so much clearer already. Thank you, Ladybird. Thank you for supporting our young friend Mario here. Awesome. Great. Now, that brings me to um, the next step. And Rhea, I see that you're here. Don't think that I don't see you or or hear you. Um, we do have a very special guest today and I can't wait um, to talk about it. There's just one or two more things that I wanna talk about real quick, just to make sure that everybody's getting the most out of this. Cause I know there's only like, you know, 35, 40 of us watching right now, but within a couple of days, it'll be a few thousand. So I just wanna make sure to cover all these bases, but we do have a very, very special guest uh, joining us today. So back to this, so step one, was find your head voice, right? So I helped Mario find his head voice so that he could get up there. The second thing that we need to do is we need to get the vocal cords to close, which is why I gave him the neigh. Did anybody hear how when I was having him do the foo 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 went really, really light and really, really breathy up there? Did everyone hear that? Go ahead and tell me in the chat if that made sense. And I bet Mario felt it too. It was like his voice just kind of ugh, just <laughs> disappeared for a second. So that brings us to step two, that even though he's hitting the notes, now we need to have him get his vocal cords to close a little bit. So rather than we just use a slightly more nasal, a slightly more bratty sound to help him get up there, right? That leads us to step number three, and I'm going through this very quickly, is that once we get that, 
then we need to get him to relax his larynx slightly. Can anyone tell me what the larynx is? Can anyone tell me what they think the larynx is? Does anyone know? I'll stop sharing this for a second. Does anyone know what the larynx is? What does it do? What is it? People said, Matt, how do you shake your voice at the end of the notes? Is that normal that you need to practice or do you just do that? Oh, I practiced my vibrato for a really long time and now I'm working on not doing it so unconsciously. Uh, Rhea, I know you know what I'm talking about too. Um, <laughs> all right, the larynx is the voice box, exactly. And the larynx is this piece of cartilage right here in your throat and it houses the vocal cords. Now, I like to think about the larynx as like a car and your vocal cords are the, like the passengers in the car. Whatever happens to the car, if the car is going up the hill, the passengers are going up the hill. If the larynx is coming down, if the car is coming down, then the passengers are going down the hill. So when you sing up to higher notes, everyone try this. Just take your thumb and your first finger and just gently feel your larynx. And then sing from a low note to a high note. Go, ah. Just sing that on ah or ooh. Whatever you want, whatever vowel you choose, it's vowel happy hour. Now, what you'll find most of the time is that the larynx goes up there. Now, we heard the same thing with Mario in that he was going, and every night I lie in bed. This guy was going up. But remember, you don't want to chase the note with your throat. Don't chase the note with your throat, okay? So, as we continue working together, what I was doing with Mario was I was actually encouraging him to relax his larynx slightly. I, I didn't tell him that, uh, that that's what I was doing. I was just giving him an exercise that helped him relax that slightly. And in this case, um, I asked him to kind of think a little bit more open with that neigh vowel. Neigh, 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 neigh. Not neigh, where my mouth is really closed. Neigh, where it's like my vowel is slightly more open. Guys, those are the three steps right there. Step one, find your head voice. Step two, get the vocal cords to close even as you're hitting those high notes. And step three, relax your larynx while you're doing it. Now, I am super excited because we have a very special guest who I'm gonna introduce here in just a second. But before I introduce her, I'm actually going to play um, just a little something that she's recently recorded. Um, her name is Rhea Verghese, and this is just the most amazing cover of Phoebe Bridger's Motion Sickness. I don't know if you guys know this song, but you should. I hate you for what you did, and I miss you like a little kid, and I faked it. Hear the harmony there? Check out this chorus. I have emotional motion sickness. Somebody roll the windows down. There are no words in the English language. I could scream to drown you out. Awesome. With that, we are going to bring in Rhea Verghese. Rhea, are you ready? to join us. Okay, cool. Nice. All right, I'm going to stop sharing this. I'm going to start sharing you. Welcome, Rhea. Everybody, Hi. welcome, Rhea, to the stream. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm just going to uh, put in a link to your YouTube channel here so that people can subscribe to you because oh, this is going to be amazing. So if you guys want to check out this song, I'm going to just drop it in the chat. <clears throat> awesome. 
Cool, that should come through. Awesome, Rhea. So the reason that I brought Rhea on was because I think that she exemplifies a singer that, first of all, um, any guesses as to what Rhea's voice type is? Is she a bass, a baritone, tenor? Probably not. Is she an alto, mezzo, or a soprano? Rhea, do you want to just uh, speak a little bit, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from so people can hear your voice a little bit? Sure. Um, hi, I'm Rhea. I'm living in San Francisco. I'm a junior in high school. And I guess like my music background is I've always been in love with musical theater. And now I'm kind of getting into like music production and songwriting. And I'm currently working on producing an e um, EP as well. So yeah, it's very, it's very exciting. And how do we know each other? Um, you're my vocal teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So I, I have a vested interest in, in your in your vocal health and your your progress as a singer. Um, so people are guessing. Can you see the chat too? No, I can't. Okay. People are guessing that you're a soprano, mezzo-soprano. Someone said you're an alto. So another person said soprano. So just quick recap on the, on the different voice types. We've got bass, baritone, and tenor for the male voice types or those who identify as male if you're trans. However you identify is whichever uh, gender uh, assignment you would choose. And then we have a little overlap with alto, uh, mezzo, and soprano. Soprano being the highest. And Rhea is absolutely a soprano, 100% for sure. And so Rhea, I thought it would be fun if we just did a couple of quick warm-ups and just showed off your range a little bit. Does that sound okay? Yes, sounds good. Awesome. Well, first of all, how's your voice feeling today? It's feeling pretty good. It's early in the morning, but yeah. at least, yeah. Early in the morning. It's 1041. Well, for me. Yeah. Early for you. So you haven't you haven't really warmed up a whole lot today yet. Not yet. Oh, no worries. No worries. Well, why don't we just try this? So I'm going to start Rhea on a G3 on the bottom, and I'm going to bring her up to a D5 on a lip trill. So let's just do a contralto. She's not a contralto. She is a contralto would be like uh, Annie Lennox or uh, Nina Simone. Not Nina Simone. She's more of an alto. Uh, Tracy Chapman, low, low female voices where you hear them and you're like, wow, that's a man. And then you look and you're like, oh, wow, that's a woman. That's a contralto voice. So yeah, this is a, this is a very high, very light uh, voice, but uh, you'll hear that in just a second. Nice. And it sounds like you're clipping just a little bit. Can you turn, are you on your uh, uh, computer mic or your? Focus right. I, I'm on my computer mic, I think. Cool. Maybe it'll adjust in just a second. Angie, you're not a pro for calling it that. And we're all here to learn this. The child are the lowest voices. We like calling all the voices. Just for, just for a second. Moving my mic? Uh, uh, muting it. It. Oh, muting it. I see. Sorry. Just for a second. Okay. The the echo should be gone. Correct me if I'm correct me if I'm I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, so we just brought Rio up to the C6 right there. Soprano sit. <laughs> Matt, please fix your mic. I'm working on it, guys. Um, yeah, soprano C6. It was what I brought her up to there. Now Rhea has lots 
and lots more notes on top of that. She's probably got like another perfect fourth uh, worth of notes in the top part of her voice there. And what I'm do, I'm, I'm, we're going to explore that in just a second, but I just wanted to stop there for a second and just say, is it reasonable for me to give um, an exercise, like let's say like a, a gee 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 or a mum 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 up that high in Rhea's voice? No, it's not. Because you can do things with the lip trill that you can't do with other exercises. Why? Does anyone have any ideas why you can get away with a little bit more with the lip trill than you can with the other exercises? There's no wrong answers. And Rhea, feel free to jump in here too. You can speak for the speak for the the people. Rhea, what have you got? Um, at least for me, when I do the lip trill, I feel like my air um is very on point and I'm like more supported singing up high rather than like on a mum or a na. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Cool. Go back to mute if you don't mind. That's a great, that's a great point. Um, so Rhea is saying the breath support is more helpful in the lip trill, but actually the lip trill uses more breath than some of those other exercises. So it's not even necessarily that, but it's that the lip trill, let's see, Kui says lip trill makes the note um, more stable and sustained. Uh, Diane said, yeah, I can do a lot more in a lip trill than I can in a story. Uh, toxicity says due to a proper flow phonation. Ooh, someone's been reading some vocal textbooks. Yes, flow phonation is what we call it when you're not being uh, too breathy or uh, too belted. You're uh, right in the middle. So flow phonation is the goal. But the real reason that the lip trill you can get away with more is because there's way less pressure. And that's basically what toxicity is saying is that there's way less pressure for your vocal cords to like smack together so hard. And instead they're just vibrating nice and evenly. And that's exactly what we want when we're expanding range, right? We don't want it to be just so like, ugh, just so strainy that you can't do anything about it. All right, now I just wanna show off a little bit more of Rhea's range. Um, so I'm gonna try not to talk so much in between because I think that's what's causing the echo. But uh, Rhea, go ahead and uh, unmute. I'm gonna start you off right here, okay? from there All right here's the c6 again nice. oh what did Rhea just do what did you do Rhea I bent my knees. You bent your knees. Why on earth would you bend your knees when you're singing? Um, because it helps me like not reach for the note too much and just let it come on its own. Ding ding ding. Exactly. What Rhea's just done is she's introduced a second level of resistance to her voice. So the first level of resistance with the lip trill is at the lips. But she's also increasing her thoracic pressure by bending at the knees. Now that's a lot of fancy words. That just means that she's basically added another way of giving her voice the pressure that it needs without just ah, just screeching her way up there. Cool? Let's keep going. So three things. Number one, blow a little more air. Number two, bend the knees. Number three, think that more open ah vowel at the top. I'll, de I'll describe what I'm doing with Rhea in just a second, but you'll see how this works, hopefully. No guarantees. No guarantees. Again. That's the E flat six. Darn high note. Is Rhea, do you have any songs that require you to sing an E flat six? Mm -hmm. No, no way. But it is good to work up that high so that the stuff in the middle sounds very, very good. Now, can you just tell me a little bit about your own journey with singing and with like, you know, your own vocal training and stuff like that? Because I think that people are going to hear you and they're going to be like, oh man, she's just, she's a perfect singer. She's 
there's no way that I could ever be that good. Could you just talk a little bit about, you know, your own journey as a singer? Yeah. So for me, when I started singing really young, so when I was younger, around like, like seven to like 10 years old, I could just like belt as high as I wanted. And I didn't really have a head voice or like a break area at all. And once I started to grow older, I noticed that like, there was a very distinct break between my chest voice and my head voice. And I got into this idea that I needed to like push up my belt. And like, I was really frustrated and I tried to find ways to just keep on pushing it until I could reach high notes. Um, but then I found Matthew and he helped me realize to like find my mix more and to like kind of blend those two voices together rather than keep on like pushing it up there a lot. And that has like helped me so much, so. Yeah, so describe that. So you, when you were younger, it wasn't like you had to worry about making transitions. You could just belt as high as you wanted to. Your voice did it. And then what happened uh, to make you feel like all of a sudden you just couldn't push that up there anymore? Um, I think I started getting like more into musical theater than I was before. And the songs that I was choosing, you needed a very like blended clear um belty voice the whole time and especially in like the notes above like the c in my voice i could not like belt those like i was hearing on the recording because it sounded very airy for me there and that was like the main issue above the c5 you mean right yes. the and even the c5 i was like pushing on to to get that in my belt right 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 and when you and i first met we were working on do you remember which song we were first working on no, I don't remember. I, I believe it was Don't Rain on My Parade. Oh, yes, yes. Which I which I think was probably a good example. Uh, tell tell people just a little bit about Don't Rain on My Parade. Like, what's it from? Who sings it? Um, it's from, um, it's sung by Barbara Streisand. And, like, she's one of my idols. And um, I picked that song for a cabaret show that I was in. And, again, that was, I was trying to sing it in the original key. And the last like note, you have to hold it. I like would just be so vocally tired by the end of it because I'd just be pushing throughout the whole song. And even though I was able to do it when I sang it isolated, by the time I reached the end of the song, I just couldn't sing it in my belt anymore. Right. And it was a very like flipped sound. And yeah. And, and what do you mean by a flipped sound? Can you demonstrate? I was, yeah, sure. I was flipping from my like chest voice to my head voice. Like, and it was very clear, a very airy switch. Can you, would you be brave and just demonstrate yeah. what that means? I believe that's a note. It's a B4, right? That you have to hold at the end? I think so. Yeah. And if memory serves. <laughs> this is so long ago. I can't believe I remember it. <laughs> yeah. But, the rain on my part. Can you do that part? I'm um, sure. Rain. Well, now I can do it in my belt because I'm yeah. not doing it. But um, you can work it with me. Do it. Do it wrong though. Okay. Rain on my parade. Right now, to a lot of people listening to that, they're going to be like, "That still sounds great." But the problem with that sound, uh, and I'm sure Ria will back me up on this, is that it doesn't have the power and the fullness to carry in a Broadway setting. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're singing Broadway, rock, pop, country, whatever, you need to learn how to project. And even though Rhea is doing um, more kind of like indie pop singer songwriter stuff now than she is doing musical theater, it's still important to learn how to do both of those. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to be able to sing breathy like the Phoebe Bridger songs, but it's also good to learn how to use the full extent of that belt and of that mix. So let's see if we can do it right. Rain on my parade. And hold that. Okay. Rain on my parade. Awesome. Is that uh, in your chest voice or is that in your mix? I think that's in my chest for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a B4 right yeah. there, that note. But if we rose, if we raise that up by even a half step or maybe a step, all of a sudden you would have to make different choices with that. Definitely. Nice, nice, nice. And Carolyn, if you don't mind just dropping that link again um, to that Expand Your Range Fast course. By the way, it's a great way to, um, to support the channel. If you guys are interested, I have a fantastic... Uh, online singing course called Expand Your Range Fast. It's only 19 bucks. Great way to uh, to support the channel. Now, let's just try a couple things. Can you go? Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. 
them. There's the switch right there. You feel it, right? Yes. Yeah. So even though there's still some chest in the notes above that, that last one is like, oh yeah, I'm back in my chest, baby. The good times are here again, right? So now let's just be brave and do that same thing and go through that same section in your voice. Here's B flat four. Notice how that's slightly different. So I'm going to ask Rio to just put a little bit more of that bratty into that. Focus more on the bratty than on the volume. So rather than na, na, and pushing. Na, 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 na. more of a, a vertical rather than a horizontal. Awesome. Great job. Na, 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 na. Awesome. Ria, I want to thank you so much for being here. Um, I love, love, love what's going on with your voice and especially with your solo music. Um, Carolyn, if you don't mind just dropping the link to subscribe to Ria's channel one more time. I put it up earlier, but maybe you could put it again. Um, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, Ria, I will see you very soon. I'm I'm teaching Ria right after this, so I'm going to have to jump in a minute. But I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to answer everyone's questions. So any questions that people have about expanding their vocal range, Ria, thank you very much. Everybody give it up for her. And thank you guys so much for being here. Um, Questions about expanding the vocal range. Um, So one that I skipped over earlier was the vibrato question. The question was, hey, Matt, how do you do that shaking thing with your voice? I think it was Mario, actually, who said uh, about the vibrato. And vibrato is just coming, sometimes it comes naturally, but other times it is something that you really have to work on in order to get it um, in a very controlled way. So in one of my recent videos, I show you the diaphragm pulse technique where you take two fingers and place it about two inches above your belly button and just allow the voice to shake. So, uh, and then you just slightly push and pulse in and out of your diaphragm um, with these two fingers and that allows the voice to shake. Now, is that real vibrato? No, but it is a tool to help you get the feeling so that eventually you can go, uh, that when you take it off, your voice will still flow that way. Great questions. Wow, I just hit one of my elusive high notes. We'll use this lip trail exercise daily. Great, great. I'm so glad to hear that. Also remember there's tons of exercises in that uh, Expand Your Range Fast course. Um, Just a quick uh, gander at what you're going to get uh, if you choose to enroll. Um, You've got this Expand Your Range Fast Masterclass. You're also going to get four HD video lessons, six studio quality vocal warm-ups, a bonus vocal range finder, because I guarantee that you're going to expand your vocal range within 30 days. Total value of 2000 bucks today. You can get it for only 19 And again, Carolyn's going to um, drop in the link so that you guys can check that out. Um, any last questions before we wrap it up? Otherwise. I'm just going to play guitar and sing some stuff. And thank you guys very much for being here. Shy, man, I have to be so careful about what I choose to play and sing on here. Because it's just like YouTube is all over me. Um, if I uh, if I play even something that sounds similar to another song, then I get a, I get a strike real quick. Uh, Zenkosi said, I watched your vibrato videos and I think I'm doing, uh, and would love for you to hear me one day. I'd love to hear that too, Zenkosi. And by the way, um, in case you're interested, um, 
you can enroll in my complete singing course, Master Your Voice, which actually does offer personalized feedback. You send in a quick recording of yourself singing something, and then I get back to you within five business days with a, a full description and full video response about what I'm hearing is going on. I'm just gonna stick around for one more minute, answer any questions. When it hits me that she's gone, I think I'll run for president, get my face put on that million dollar bill. So when those rich men that she wants show her ways they can't take care of her, I'll have found a way to be there with her still. Great, two last quick questions. I'm gonna answer them as quickly as I can because as I mentioned, I do have to run right after this, but I so appreciate all of you guys for being there. Carolyn, go ahead and drop that link again. Um, how to control your larynx and make it stay neutral throughout a song. Well, the first step is to figure out where the larynx is coming up. So if you notice that there's like, I wanna swing, then you can add a little bit of kind of a yawny, kind of sound to relax the larynx on the on those notes. It's kind of like um like if your larynx is going really high on specific notes and then you can add a little bit of this yawny which kind of helps lower it so that they balance right out into the middle. So if I'm going I want to swing I want to swing I can add a little bit of that yawny sound to it and you've got it. Is it bad to practice every day or give some time for your voice to rest? Um, I would say five days of practice is fantastic and they do not have to be consecutive. It doesn't have to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, you can do Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. That would be also five days. So you can have days of rest in between. But also it kind of depends on the vocal training that you're doing. If you're doing stuff that's really, really intense, then that's kind of hard to do. Um, and that's really hard on your voice. So just be careful about that. Um, let's see how to hold more air or how to release less when I sing every time I'm out of air and I'm breathing in the middle of words. Well, Fabian, what's going on there is that you're probably haven't gotten to the place, um, where the vocal cords are operating as they should. If the vocal cords aren't closing effectively, then you're just going to be leaking air. It's like having a leaking pipe, right? Now you can add more breath control to that, but that's like adding more water to a leaking pipe. It's just going to leak out faster. So instead, what you need to do is you need to learn how to get those cords to close a little bit. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, a great exercise to do that would be an ah vowel. Like you're saying apple. You'll notice even when I do that, when I make that sound apple, that that ah is really buzzy. And that buzziness comes from the uh, the sound of the vocal cords closing. Guys, uh, let's see. When we sign up in the course, can we hear a feedback to know if we improved? Um, Panay, I'm not sure whether you're talking about the Master Your Voice class or the Expand Your Range Fast class. Master Your Voice, uh, we offer personalized feedback to everyone that enrolls. So yes, within that class, you'll be able to. Um, however, in the Expand Your Range uh, Fast class, um, that one is just a self-study course. So, uh, Carolyn, if you don't mind just adding the link to that one more time. But, guys, I appreciate you so much. I love your questions. Thanks so much for being here, and have a great rest of your day.